Good morning. Welcome to Morning Prayer. My Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My shall see it together. Blessed be the Lord our God, by whose grace we are yet alive. Blessed be his Son, Jesus Christ, by whose rising we are set free. Blessed be the Spirit of God, in whom is our hope and our joy. Let us pray together. Father, 
We come together in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, to offer you our worship, praise, and thanksgiving. To you belong all power and glory. You are the source of all goodness. Let our worship be a witness to your peace and saving power. Through your Spirit, may we ever rejoice in the abiding presence of our risen and ascended Lord. Amen. The Jubilati. O shout to the Lord in triumph all the earth. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his face with songs of joy. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he who has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Come into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and bless his holy name. For the Lord is good. His loving mercy is forever, his faithfulness throughout all generations. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. Let us just pause and think. Allow God to show us where we have fallen short of his glory, the things that we have done wrong, our thoughts, our words, our deeds. Let's just pause and bring them as they come and leave them at the foot of the cross, asking God for his forgiveness. Lord, we pray to you for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Set us free, O God, from the bondage of our sins and give us the liberty of that abundant life which you have made known to us in your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Psalms appointed for today are Psalms 30 and 32. Psalms 30 and 32. Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord, my God, I cried out to you and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life as I was going down to the grave. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endures but the twinkling of an eye, his favor for a lifetime. Weeping may spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. Then you hid your face. And I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with the Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my wailing into dancing. You have put off my sackcloth and clothe me with joy. Therefore, my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. Psalm 32 Happy are they whose transgressions are forgiven and whose sin is put away. Happy are they to whom the Lord imputes no guilt and in whose spirit there is no guile. 
while I held my tongue, my bones withered away because of my groaning all day long. For your hand was heavy upon me day and night. My moisture was dried up as in the heat of summer. Then I acknowledged my sin to you and did not conceal my guilt. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord. Then you forgave me the guilt of my sin. Therefore all the faithful will make their prayers to you in the time of trouble. When the great waters overflow, they shall not reach them. You are my hiding place. You preserve me from trouble. You surround me with shouts of deliverance. I will instruct you and teach you in the way that you should go. I will guide you with my eyes. Do not be like horse or mule, which have no understanding, which must be fitted with bit and bridle, or else they will not stay near you. Great are the tribulations of the wicked, but mercy embraces those who trust in the Lord. Be glad, you righteous, and rejoice in the Lord. Shout for joy, all who are true of heart. Glory to the Father, and, and to, to the, the Son, and, and to the Holy Spirit, Spirit as it was, was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of the Lord, written in the book of Haggai, chapter 2, verses 1 to 9. In the second year of King Darius, in the seventh month, on the twenty-first day of the month, the word of the Lord came by the prophet Haggai, saying, Speak now to Zerubbabel, son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua, son of Jehoshadak, the high priest, and to the remnant of the people, and say, Who is left among you that saw the house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Is it not in your sight as nothing? Yet now take courage, O Zerubbabel, says the Lord. Take courage, O Joshua, son of Jehoshadak, the high priest. Take courage, all you people of the land, says the Lord. Work, for I am with you, says the Lord of hosts. According to the promise that I made you, when you came out of Egypt, my spirit abides among you. Do not fear. For thus says the Lord of hosts, Once again, in a little while, I will shake the heavens and the earth, and the sea and the dry land, and I will shake all the nations, so that the treasure of all nations shall come, and I will fill this house with splendor, says the Lord of hosts. The silver is mine, and the gold is mine, says the Lord of hosts. The latter splendor of this house shall be greater than the former, says the Lord of hosts. And in this place I will give prosperity, says the Lord of hosts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. We use the canticle, the song of the redeemed. O ruler of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are ways of righteousness and truth. O king of all the ages, who can fail to do you homage, Lord, and sing the praises of your name? For you only are the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall before you, because you because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. A reading from the Word of the Lord, written in the Gospel according to Matthew, chapter 24, verses 1 to 14. As Jesus came out of the temple, and was going away, his disciples came to point out to him the buildings of the temple. Then he asked them, You see all these, do you not? Truly I tell you, 
Not one stone will be left here upon another. All will be thrown down. When he was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will this be, and what will be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the age? Jesus answered them, Beware that no one leads you astray. For many will come in my name, saying, I am the Messiah, and they will lead many astray. And you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not alarmed, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All this is but the beginning of the birth pangs. Then they will hand you over to be tortured, and they will put you to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of my name. Then many will fall away, and they will betray one another and hate one another. And many false prophets will arise and lead many astray. And because of the increase of lawlessness, the love of many will grow cold, but the one who endures to the end will be saved. And this good news of the kingdom will be proclaimed throughout the world as a testimony to all the nations, and then the end will come. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Good morning again, brothers and sisters. You know, growing up, they've always said, TV rots your brain. But I've come to learn a lot of things from television. I think it's really about what you take away from it. And I've been thinking about my version growing up of Sesame Street. And there was this, the, the race between the, um, the tortoise and the hare, the turtle and the, the rabbit. As we would we would say and you learn a lot from it you realize that you know you can't be too arrogant you can't be cunning you can't you just have to be humble and and take your time with things you know but specifically right now I'm thinking about it because there was a tortoise the turtle unconcerned about what the rabbit said the, the the showing off of the rabbit the rabbit going back and forth and coming again and there he was taking his cool time moving at his own pace taking his time and the rabbit was so arrogant and whatever he lost a race that he could have won but he was so distracted by himself that he forgot that it was about the race. He forgot that it was about winning, basically. And became obsessed with just, or distracted, whatever. But the point, but, but, but the focus on me was this turtle moving real slow. We know, real slow. And he was just going and he going and he's going. And eventually he won the race. I mean, we know that that is one of Aesop's fables and it went all over the place. But it, it pointed for me this word in Matthew chapter 24, verse 13. Endurance. Endurance. For many of us, we feel that enduring everything that is going on around us and in this world and, and in our communities, in our homes and stuff, enduring is not saying anything about it enduring is just keeping to ourselves and pointing out all those persons who should handle that situation or just simply say not me or oh, that's not my business not how we would say it you know just simply not me and keep to ourselves or um i wasn't trained for that or but we have to understand that we are all called 
everybody in their own capacity, everybody with their own set of work to do, their own workload, their own distribution, right? And if we understood that, we realize that we all have something to do. And this is why Jesus said, and, and, and it's something that plays all the time, there's much work to be done, but there are, there are limited workers. And they're limited workers, not because there aren't enough persons on earth here, but a lot of persons who are caught up in themselves yeah. rather than focusing on the race and winning it. I'll repeat. There are a lot of us who are caught up in ourselves, what we want, how we want it done, and so forth. Looking at what others are doing and focus on how they are doing it and, and being jealous and envious and, and show off and all of those other things. Except focusing on the race that we're running. We all have our own life's race to run. We all have our own but we're lost and we lose the race. Enduring is about us continuing God's work regardless of what is happening around us. You know the readings point and, and, and Haggai is there pointing out uh, uh, Haggai is there pointing out all that is happening around. But Jesus reminds the disciples, you're going to see a whole lot of things happening. A lot of things are going to be earthquakes and drought and famine and destruction and wars and all of that. And he says, that's just the beginning. Bird pans, contractions, a whole set of, um, well, a lot of men may not understand that bird pans, they know the contraction stuff. But the point is that it's like false contractions then. I mean, we, we, we watch TV. Meaning that there are a lot of things that will happen to make us think that the time is upon us. But it's not. It's just the beginning. So there are a whole lot more to come. And I mean, if you... if I feel so old. If you were wrong when we were turning into the new millennium, moving from 1999 to... to to the year 2000 how many persons thought that was the end and that was it and a lot of things went haywire they were all over the place they did a whole host of nonsense thinking that that was the end of time but it wasn't where 21 years later the point is we do not know the end we know we we've seen some signs we know because jesus points out to us that we'll see some signs but as verse 13 says, it's not about what's going on. It's about you running your race, you enduring to the end. Those are the persons who will win. Those are the persons who will receive. Those are the persons who will be saved. And that's the race we ought to be running. The race to be saved. The race to win God's favor. The race to receive the place in God's kingdom that he has, has appointed for his people. And in order to run that race, or in order to be successful in that race, we have to focus on what God requires of us. That's the endurance he's talking about. Take our time, not focus on what is happening left or right. And when I say left or right, I'm not talking about being selfish. I'm talking about not getting bogged down in the negative side of things not getting lost in what people see and how many false prophets would come as as so the scripture describes and who would say i am the, the the christ and i am the savior and so forth not focused on that but focused on what god requires of us and what god requires of us is to serve him with a quiet mind serve him diligently serve him with with our all be open and loving and caring and kind be peaceable be fruitful be supportive help one another reach out to each other get to know him better these are the things that we're required to do this is what we're called to do this is the race that we must run focused on christ not turning to the left or right but focused on christ 
run the race that is set before us. Yeah, not giving up. I mean, and it's hard, it's struggling, it, it, it is tough, it, it is frustrating. But we must focus so that we will endure to the end. I dare call myself a, a former athlete. But in, in running, one of the things they would teach us is to breathe. Long distance, short distance, whichever one. Sprinting, long distance, we had to learn to breathe. And the breathing was that we would take our time, keep focus, not looking at the person who is not turning to the left or to the right. Glimpsing, yes, to see what is coming up at you, but breathing. And that breathing is to help control and stay focused. And, and I thought about that because I want us to understand that in breathing, in this race, this life's race, is to remind us, be steady, take your time, listen for God, allow God to lead you, relax. We're not on our own, but God is with us. He's giving us the strength that we need. He's giving us the power that we need. He's giving us the energy that we need. But we have to breathe Christ. We have to breathe Christ. Inhale and exhale Christ. That is where our strength comes from. That is where our energy comes from. And that is how we will endure to the end. Brothers and sisters, we all have a race to run. Let's not get lost in the things that are happening around us. Let us stay focused on what God requires of us. And what God requires of us is one to answer his call not push it off to the other but to answer his call to work diligently to know him better and to serve him better by paying attention to the needs of our brothers and sisters getting to know god in a deeper way and being faithful to what he requires of us the race is not for the swiftest but for those who endure to the end, for they will be saved. Let us work to be saved. Amen. Oh, yes.
invite us to confess our faith boldly in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Lord, reveal your love among us, that we may know the joy of your salvation. Grant peace within and among all nations, and teach all leaders wisdom. Endow your church with faithfulness, and her servants with knowledge and true godliness. Defend, O Lord, the rights of the poor and the oppressed, that your justice may be known among all people. Lord, renew your spirit within us, that in us and through us, your will may be done. Merciful God, who sent your messengers, the prophets, to preach repentance and prepare the way for our salvation, give us grace to heed their warnings and forsake our sins, that we may greet with joy the coming of Jesus Christ, our Redeemer, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Eternal God and Father, by whose power we are created and by whose love we are redeemed, guide and strengthen us by your Spirit, that we may give ourselves to your service and live this day in love for you and one another. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Into your hands, Lord, we commend ourselves this day. Let your presence be with us to its close. Strengthen us to remember that in whatever good work we do, we are serving you. Give us a diligent and watchful spirit, that we may seek in everything to know your will, and knowing it, may gladly perform it, to the honor and glory of your name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite us to offer our own petitions at this time. We remember in our prayers, the health systems around the world, especially given this pandemic, the strain on the economy, the strain on the health system. Lord, help us as a nation, as individuals, as people here on earth, to be mindful, to think of others, to think of others in our actions, to think of ourselves as well, the dangers and the harms that we put ourselves in and others in when we don't obey our COVID restrictions. Help us to be a little more responsible. Help us to see what is happening around us and be mindful or to take action that will reduce the spread of this pandemic. Forgive us, O oh Lord, 
for being selfish, for not thinking of others who may have their own sicknesses and need the help of the doctors. Help us, O oh God, to see our careless ways and to help us, help us, O oh God, to turn from it. Lord, we need your intervention in this pandemic. We need your help, O oh God, to overcome it. Guide us, direct us, help us, strengthen us. Open more eyes, O oh God. Open more hearts. And give us love so that we will love and care for each other. And make right decisions that will build up rather than break down. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Continue to protect our nurses, our doctors, our janitorial staff. All those who are on the front line, all those, especially our ambulance drivers or, or first responders, even people who are weary making calls and trying to help or do their part in this situation. Give them courage and strength. Protect them and their families as they assist in the fight against this pandemic. Lord, in your mercy, Help, pray. Help us and save us. Amen. The prayer of dedication. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of your holy word. May it be a lantern to our feet, a light to our parts, and a strength to our lives. Take us and use us to love and serve all persons in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the name of your Son. Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we can ask or conceive by the power which is at work among us, to him be the glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all ages. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Do have a wonderful day. Thank you.